hope that Twitch stream goes. Yeah, okay, that worked. Okay, so welcome to this year's July Dev uh, Project Call. Um, we've, we've got a bit of uh, topics coming up. Um, first of all, of course, uh, GRCon, which is happening surprisingly soon. Um, then we'll have some status updates on our Google Summer of Code project. Um, we've got uh, um, some work that we've done with DARPA uh, funded organizations and we'll have a rather interesting update on that. Um, then we've been uh, working with the uh, and Telescope Array um, uh, on making that accessible to the community and I think we'll have Derek um, explain what that means and lastly I'll, I'll probably talk a bit about um, what happened um, on radio's development side so yeah with that I'd like to kick it off and hand it over to uh, Derek Thanks, Marcus. So, Gnu Radio Conference is uh, starting less than two months from now, which is uh, both very exciting and, of course, uh, always a bit um, intimidating uh, as one of the organizers, but things are coming together really well. The initial schedule is actually up, uh, and so all of those talks that have been submitted and accepted have now been scheduled in. We have workshops ranging from radio astronomy um, to beamforming and the standard uh, RF knock, which has always been popular uh, in previous years, and um, some other ones which I don't remember if they're supposed to be surprises. So um, I will I will leave you to explore the schedule and see what's already been announced. Uh, also up is our list of keynote speakers and. Um, that uh, is also well worth taking a look at. I believe we're supposed to be getting bios uh, up on them quite soon. But um, thanks, Marcus, for pulling that up on the stream. I, this is all um, taking a huge amount of work, and I really want to highlight um, Michelle Thompson for leading up the conference again this year and doing just a fantastic job pulling this together. Um, she and the other volunteers who have been working on this I just continue to do an exceptional job. We, yeah, are looking forward to this. It will be virtual. Uh, if you haven't already taken a look at it, uh, some of the really important notes, uh, it is completely free to attend. Uh, all of the main track talks are being live streamed uh, to YouTube. And we have um, side chat rooms where you'll be able to talk with the speakers as their presentations are airing. Um, and get your questions answered there. Interact with other people in the GNU Radio community. We'll have rooms set up for different topic areas and be able to, to create side rooms as, as you find new things to talk about, which is plenty exciting. The workshops, uh, it's a $50 one-time payment to get a workshop pass to everything that's airing during the week. Um, so those are for all of the interactive sessions and I, I think it's a really good value it's a great way of supporting the project and partially it's just we can only fit so many people in uh, and so while the standard registration has been absolutely running away uh, in terms of numbers the the, con the workshops uh, have not yet filled up and if you've already registered for the workshops you'll be receiving an email uh, in about two weeks' time, we're expecting it to go out Monday, August 3rd, with the information about how to sign up for the individual sessions that are listed on the schedule uh, and that are being added to the schedule as, uh, as we go along the next two weeks. There is also the pay what you want registration. Um, this allows you to either get the ticket for free or, again, support the project by, by paying a bit towards your registration and um, every dollar does count. So thanks very much if you're able to do that. Students, again, are uh, free to register, including the workshops. So if you're a student, um, just sign up. Uh, 
the sponsor uh, the student registration is sponsored and so uh folks's um uh, cvs resumes end up getting passed along to the companies that sponsor the students um and that's also a great way of getting your name in front of a whole bunch of of large companies that are looking to hire i mean that's the that's part of the reason why they sponsor um so i see a question that's come up on on the stream there's no workshop link uh, the workshops are currently listed in the schedule, and it's the full conference registration is the workshop pass. Um, we can work on improving the, the text there, if that's unclear, since that is apparently unclear. The, there are still one or two talk slots open, so if you have a technical topic uh, or, or non-technical topic about uh, wireless communications and GNU radio, it is your, you can still submit, and that's from the main conference website, guineradio.org uh, slash um, grcon20, uh, and then there's a submit item there. So uh, please do check that out, and hopefully uh, you'll find it interesting. We're really excited about the content. Thanks. So that basically wraps up GRCon for today, I guess. Um, but I think um, I, I'm not going to let you off the hook here because we have Google Summer of Code also going on. So the Google Summer of Code, uh, we have one student this summer. I and Alec uh, Gupta has been working on digital pre-distortion. This is a huge topic, and he's been doing great work on it uh, and overcoming some of the limitations within I. Uh, the GNU Radio framework in terms of uh, feedback loops. And so he's been doing a great job with that, despite not coming from any sort of communications background. And so uh, there's a whole bunch of open areas where we'd love people to jump in and, and help contribute to that. He's working on all of the core algorithms, but there's definitely a lot of pieces that help support this in terms of um, adding on test waveforms like OFDM, adding in uh, synchronization so that you can uh, characterize a, a an actual power amplifier. What he's currently uh, put in and has working is uh, model blocks that allow you to put in very realistic models of power amplifiers. So if you just want to simulate the distortion of a power amplifier, you can do that. Uh, and then he's worked on um, the RLS algorithm for, for digital pre-distortion and putting in a polynomial-based pre-distorter. So those are all up on GitHub uh, at github.org.com slash uh, guinea radio slash grdpd. Uh, and as you can see on the main screen, um, he is publishing weekly updates on his WordPress, on his blog. So he has, uh, I believe, another month and a bit uh, left on the program. So we'll be adding in the least mean squared algorithm next. That's pretty cool. Um, so where's my agenda? Um, then I've promised that we'll talk a bit about um, what GNU Radio has to do with money coming from DARPA um, and what that basically means. I, I think I'd like to hand over to Josh for that. You know. Well, all right. Thanks, Marcus. Um, so, as I guess everyone's probably aware, there's some things that are hard to do in GNU Radio. There's been a lot of efforts over the years to make GNU Radio work on a lot of different heterogeneous platforms. Um, and, you know, they get it to work, but the general problem has never really been solved. Um, so, one of the things you probably heard in, in Marcus's talks, either at FOSDEM or at GRCon, um, is wanting to make GNU Radio taking the guts, the scheduler, what we call the scheduler, you know, the part that moves samples around and gets it into different memory locations so the blocks can um, handle those, those signals. Um, getting that to be able to operate in a wide, um, a wide variety of, of different processing domains. Um, so in that, in that you know, broader vision of having a heterogeneous GNU radio, um, we've been made aware of some DARPA programs that are ongoing um, that we've been able to collaborate with the researchers there, which has been a great opportunity. 
Um, so those two projects um, are, one is the DSOC program, domain-specific um, domain specific scheduler on chip, and the other is SDR 4.0, both being led by um, Tom Rondeau, um, who's at DARPA now, he used to be the uh, GNU Radio president. So we've been able to work with, with these researchers, and we, we set up a series of the original goal was to have a hack fest before um, the, the, the COVID crisis happened and we weren't able to all meet in the same location. But we've been able to set up a series of workshops with these researchers and brainstorm and pick their brains and figure out what they've done in these areas of making schedulers, intelligent schedulers that can work on a variety of heterogeneous platforms. So they, they've gone down this road for these problems of um, of solving this heterogeneous scheduling problem, um, so so this is these workshops have been ongoing and it's been a great opportunity, and um, we hope to update the community in the near future via a white paper what the outcome of these workshops are, and um, that's the next that's the next step. And we also are working towards a um, a proof of concept sandbox code to prototype some of these concepts that that we've been discussing. So more technical detail to come. And um, so that's that's the update. I guess I, I, I mentioned, sorry, uh, I mentioned one of the, the projects, the, the DSOC program. The other project um, is called the SDR 4.0 program. And, and that's being led specifically by um, some guys at Blacklinks, um, a company in Maryland. And, um, and this, this project is much more specifically geared towards um, towards improving the current GNU radio to allow for heterogeneous processing. So this, this work will directly impact uh, upstream GNU radio in the near future to, um, to get GNU radio running on, say, MPSOC and RFSOC boards and take advantage of all the resources that are at hand, try to generalize the interfaces and things like that. So, more updates to come in the future. Just wanted to make everyone aware of these interactions that are going on and these collaborations that um, can greatly benefit GNU Radio in the future. Thanks, Josh. And honestly, um, you, everyone, and especially you, have been putting a lot of work into these workshops, and uh, we spend a lot of time in there. Um, so it's um, pretty, pretty exciting for us to see how all these things come together because we're working with you know mostly big players there and. They were very much um, dedicated to making things work with GNU Radio and not only with GNU Radio as an accessory. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty exciting. Um, on the downside of that, yeah, people might have noticed that um, my involvement with the bug tracker on, on the GNU Radio master branch has has slowed down a bit in a couple last couple of weeks, mainly due to that. Um, I'm I'm gonna pick up. Uh, hopefully most of the slack soon um, but that if you're wondering why my reply is slowed down that's basically the reason um, what we did finish though and that again is also Josh's work um, shortly before last uh, month's call was uh, that we've merged um, our move from SWIG to PyBind into um, uh, into master um, and uh, just as a reminder, SWIG was our way of wrapping, uh, wrapping our C++ code for Python and also the other way around. Um, and we've been able to replace that. So uh, I've been getting very um, well thought through um, emails from people that said, okay, this might be breaking too much at once. And we still did it, um, which kind of sounds brazen. But it was really what we had to do to, to move forward. Um, what we saw since then is that people have tried it out. People have ported two or three out of three modules over to the new architecture. And um, it works not only if you're rewriting your um, uh, out of three module from scratch. So that's, that's um, pretty solid, I'd say. Um, that is basically um, a large amount of code that we've been able to um, say um, make obsolete and it also will make our lives maintaining stuff easier in the future and um, 
if, if you've been having Swig trouble in the past, you will probably appreciate um, how much this might make your life better in the future. Um, but it does mean that you will have, uh, will have to depend on PyBind 11 in the future. So um, be aware that Neurator 3.9 will have a new dependency, namely PyBind 11, but it will have one dependency less, and that's Swig. Um, so that's basically it from my side. Did I forget anything important? Oh, did, did I mention the uh, ATA work? Not yet. <laughs> that sounds like a mistake, though. <laughs> Sorry. I, I assumed you were asking if you had forgotten anything in your sections. Um, could you please pull up the image that I just sent you in, in Leeds? Sure. I, so while he's doing that, this uh, point here is some work that's been going on during the summer. And it all began uh, last May when the SETI Institute uh, and Berkeley uh, SETI Research Center hosted a GNU Radio Hack Fest at the Hat Creek Radio Observatory in Northern California. Uh, this is an array of 42 six meter wide uh, satellite dishes that are used for radio astronomy primarily. Uh, they're set up with cryogenic antennas, they cover 200 megahertz up to 10 gigahertz, and it's a really impressive piece of, of kit, really. Uh, it was phenomenal to, for Guinea Radio to be able to run the workshop there, and SETI has been interested in continuing that sort of relationship. And so I, over this summer, they've had some sessions going with their interns, uh, including learning how to use GNU Radio and about SDR. And there's been work on setting up a publicly available uh, server running at the Allen, uh, at the Hat Creek Radio Observatory and using the Allen Telescope Array, uh, the dishes pictured in back here. And that server is now installed, now has GNU Radio uh, set up, and we're just waiting for the radios to arrive. Um, and we'll be able to receive four channels of 200 megahertz of bandwidth. Uh, control is going to be given over the dishes. So if you want to point that at your favorite pulsar uh, or other target, that's going to be possible. And we're still figuring out how to roll this out to the community in a way that people can, can you know, usefully get onto it. Um, this is something that it's awesome of them. They, the SETI Institute it funded the server and they're donating that basically uh, to the community. And that has 48 terabytes of storage, uh, you know, 80 giggy worth of, of ethernet. And so it's going to be a phenomenal resource. And there'll be a lot more information about this um, announced at GRCon and, and in the coming months. But I wanted to give this a heads up and if you're interested in being part of the initial work of, of writing the drivers to make this possible, um, please do drop us a note in chat uh, or on the Discuss Any Radio email list. And um, yeah, we'll be trying to open this up just as soon as hardware is actually running. And this will include um, quite a powerful uh, FPGA installed in the server and uh, some GPUs. So we're hoping that this will be a, also a test bed for developing more uh, heterogeneous computing type applications using Guinea Radio. This, I mean, it's uh, pretty crazy that you know you can get free access to um, these dishes. <laughs> it continues to absolutely just melt my mind. Um, it's it's one of the most surreal things to have a Guinea Radio flow graph uh, <laughs> start running. And then you can watch using their webcam as your selected dishes pan to your target. Uh, so in the coming week, uh, one of their interns who is working on this will be trying to make some basic astronomical observations. And then the hope is to start targeting some of the uh, deep space probes that are still emitting. That's pretty cool. So I'll try not to steal too much of their thunder, but they, they should have some really fun stuff to um, share during their talks at, at GRCon. Awesome, thanks. So, 
I think I've, I've, we've really made it through the agenda. Um, is that right, everyone? It is. So there's, there's 15 people live on the stream. Uh, I imagine two or three of those are us. But does <laughs> anyone else have questions? Yeah. Uh, and not just about the things that we've listed here, but anything about um, Guinea Radio as a project uh, and as a pseudo organization. <laughs> And I guess while we wait for the inevitable stream lag to uh, roll through, um, I'm trying to think of qu tricky questions to, to ask you, uh, Marcus. Oh. <laughs> but um, I'm not very good at coming up with, with things on the spot. Uh, so yeah, cover... that, that's a good question though. Like currently my favorite active uh, out of three module is GR satellites because, of, you know, it's a very real use case for these set of dishes. If that was the question you were trying to come up with. That is definitely one of the good ones. Um, I think something else that we haven't mentioned, because it's it's not really at a publicly usable state, but the development is, is all just being done by community members, uh, is that GRC is being ported to QT. Oh, yeah. Um, we, don't know whether that's going to be a permanent change or um, something that gets merged, but I, I certainly hope so. Yeah. Um, so for a bit of back, uh, technical background, um, historically, Gnu Radio has had three different windowing toolkits that we use, the now defunct GRWX uh, GUI, um, the GRQT GUI, both of which um, offer visualization um, widgets like oscilloscope plots, frequency plots, um, and GTK, which is used within uh, uh, GR like to draw GRC and everything, and also like Pi QWT for the filter designer and whatnot. So it's it's been a mess. So if every um, dependency we can re reduce is, is really nice and speaking of dependencies and and gtk specifically um i know that some of the people who have been uh working on on improving the packaging and distribution of new radio um have been running into gtk as as one of those dependencies that can be a little bit tricky to work with um we do have the Windows binary installer, so clearly it is possible. But um, I, getting rid of GTK would would make it somewhat easier to um, have nice packages. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, speaking of packaging, I ooh. Anaconda. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned this on the last uh, project call, but some excellent work. Uh, has been done over the past couple months in packaging GNU Radio, GR Osmo SDR, uh, UHD, RTL SDR, and a few other out of tree modules um, within the Anaconda environment. And when it goes well, and it, it frequently does, um, this is a really fast path uh, to getting a working GNU Radio installation on Mac, Windows, or Linux. Yeah. So. And also, um, Jeff Niebuhr, who's been traditionally packaging radio for uh, Windows with native Visual Studio or MSVC builds, um, he's just released 3.8.1.0, I think, um, uh, as a Windows binary. And um, please, people, do try that out too, because um, yeah, our builds are only as good as the feedback they get. and. Like Jeff has been doing that like totally on his own, um, without you know <laughs> much support from from the rest of the community. So um, I'm pretty sure that he'll like every shout out and every thing he can get. And also like I'm super happy about Anaconda packaging, every everything that makes it easier to have a working radio that people don't have to build themselves um, makes me happy as as a software maintainer. Um, looking at the chat, like 
we've answered one question there and that was whether um, lightning talk slots are still available. Um, and yes, they are. Uh, so these are five minute long talk slots where anyone can talk about anything um, other than a new product you're releasing. Uh, if you're interested in that, sponsorship for Guinea Radio Conference is still available. Um, hit up by uh, grcon at guinearadio.org if you're a, a part of a company that would like to support the event uh, and get yourself advertised. But um, if you just have a cool project, uh, absolutely would love to have you on the program. These are always a fun part of Guinea Radio Conference. And um, I think there's three to five slots per day and there's still a few of those available. So there's just five minutes to share, you know, whatever you're working on. We've had people sh sharing their latest camping trip and, you know, how they stuck a, an SDR up in a tree. Yeah, So and it was pretty cool. Um, it was good fun. Yeah. Um, so please, do, do definitely submit. Um, lightning talks. Lightning uh, talk. What about posters? Um, is there something like a poster session? I, I don't know how that works on the web. Like basically you upload a website, I guess. Yeah, uh, and, and I'll admit that we are still figuring out the full details, but there are there is going to be a poster session and it will likely be a combination of the posters being visible online on the website for the duration of the conference and, and presumably beyond, uh, as well as basically lightning talks when it comes to the posters. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned that if you're, you're having a new product and you're a company and you want to sell that, that you can reach out to you for sponsoring. So there's still sponsoring slots available. Yes, there are. Um, also, <laughs> we, we have been uh, so, uh, what's the right word? Inundated, happy, pleased, fortunate, um, blessed with uh, returning and new sponsors this year that I, not that we want to turn away money, but we're running out of spaces in our, we had already had, we already had a full schedule yeah. uh, pretty much. And so we're really short on sponsor talk slots because we didn't start off with that many and they're mostly taken now. I, but absolutely there's, we can find ways for any company to participate in, in Guinea Radio Conference. Um, and we're very, very eager to work with people on finding fun ways to to get your company's name out, advertise products, um, and and have you support the project, because G GRCon is hands down our largest source of income for the year, and it makes a massive difference when when anyone is able to support the project to any level, um, and even we have uh, some people who are you know single person shops doing uh, consulting who are sponsoring at the patron level, which is $250. So um, if you're using Guinea Radio in your company, I, I, I'd hope that uh, this is something you may feel is, is worth uh, thinking about. Yeah. OK, s ask. Um... Josh just posted the uh, link to the um, to the radio website's blog entry about the DARPA project. I'm gonna just pull this up real quick. Oh, look there, there's that uh, Slack channel that we no longer use. Um, let me, where do we? Um, so, uh, we've just, really just, just published this. Um, and Josh describes a lot of things um, that will happen, that have happened, and how um, radio DARPA projects and uh, the performers of these DARPA projects, which uh, do include a few you know, high-profile names, um, work together. So this might be a good read after this call is over, which I think, scrolling to the uh, chat, might be the case because there's no more questions and we're hitting the magic 30 minutes uh, brick wall. So thank everyone for being on this call and see you next month or on the mailing list or on, you know, matrix.
right. chat.gnuradio.org. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna open that. I mean, I this when it loads is how GNU Radio can be found on Matrix. Um, there's the totally confidential leads channel, which I shouldn't be opening. Um, and we have like, if you join, you you drop into the general chat um, channel, which happens to be bridged over to IRC, so you're not missing out on any of the fun uh, on IRC. So uh, I, I'd really recommend you join that because we have a lot of topic specific uh, channels there. And also, big plus, um, this is the same platform that we'll use um, during GRCon for you know hall talks, for lecture hall talks, for the workshops basically. Um, I don't know, wait, that might be something different. But, um, but yeah, for all of these things and having a head start on using the infrastructure for the conference might be a good thing. Um, yeah. So for example, Peanut, who is also a fan of um, big dishes, asked where we can find the Archon schedule. And there it is. So with that, I, I think we should really close um, the call for the day, unless I, I actually forgot something. OK. Then again, thanks everyone for being here and see you soon. Bye-bye.